Hello everyone and welcome to the weird, scary and horrible parts of humanity. Nacio Gener Gonzalez was born on the 5th of August 1858 on Endisto Island, South Carolina. Endisto Island is one of South Carolina's sea islands, the larger part of which lies in Charleston County with its southern tip in Colleton County. As of 2000, its population is 2,301 individuals. He was the son of Confederate Colonel Ambriso Jose Gonzalez and Harriet Rutledge Elliott. Ambrosio Jose Gonzalez was a Cuban Revolutionary General who became Colonel in the Confederate Army during the American Civil War, serving as the Chief of Artillery in the Department of South Carolina, Georgia and Florida. He was also a Cuban Revolutionary Leader with the Venezuelan General Nacio Lopez who opposed the Spanish regime. Harriet Rutledge Elliott was the daughter of William Elliott, a South Carolina writer of non-fiction who also owned a rice plant and was a state senator. The pair married in 1856 when Elliott was just 16 and Gonzalez was aged 38. They had six children with Nacio Genero Gonzalez, their third child. Attending school for one year at St. Timothy's Home School for Boys in Herndon, Virginia, he left school at 17. And Gonzalez became a telegraph operator in 1875 to help his extended family, working in railroad depots in Varnville, South Carolina, Savannah, Georgia, and Vadosta, Georgia. During this time, he handled news reports and developed an interest in journalism and state politics. In 1880, he left the telegraph office in Valdosta to become a reporter for the Daily News based in Greenville, South Carolina. Shortly after this, he went to work for the Greenville Daily News and then worked as a correspondent for the News and Courier newspaper in Columbia, South Carolina, the capital and second largest city of South Carolina. He resigned from the News and Courier in 1890 as he opposed the newspaper supporting the 83rd Governor of South Carolina, Democrat John Peter Richardson III, who would eventually resign on the 4th of December 1890. Planning a trip to work as a newspaper correspondent in Hawaii, he was convinced by his friends and admirers to remain in Colombia. In 1891, he and his older brother, Ambrose E. Gonzalez, founded The State, a newspaper based in Columbia, South Carolina. The newspaper was quite progressive for its time, and its editorials called for, amongst others, an end to lynching, the reform of child labor laws, supported labor unions, the building of railroads, public education, and also supported the women's suffragettes movement. When the Spanish-America War commenced, Gonzalez traveled to Florida in 1898 in an attempt to secure a position as a guide for the American armies. When this failed, he went to Cuba and sent numerous reports back to the state, which would later be published under the series In Darkest Cuba. Gonzalez married Lucia Barron, a native of Manning, South Carolina, on the 14th of November 1901. The state was critical of the policies of Benjamin Tillman. Tillman was a member of the Democratic Party who served as the 84th Governor of South Carolina from the 4th of December 1890 until the 4th of December 1894. He was also the United States Senator for South Carolina from the 4th of March 1895. Tillman was a white supremacist who opposed civil rights for African Americans. During the election in 1876 for South Carolina's governor, Tillman led a paramilitary group of red shirts and additionally, during his four years in office as governor of South Carolina, 18 African Americans were lynched in South Carolina, with the state having its highest number of lynchings of any decade. James Hammond Tillman, Tillman's nephew, was the 64th Lieutenant of South Carolina from the 15th of January 1901 until the 20th of January 1903. The state criticized James Tillman's run for the 1902 South Carolina governor's race for the Democratic nomination, which he lost with just 17.2% of a vote or 16,398 votes as the second to last candidate. The candidature was won by Duncan Clinch Haywood, who would become the 88th Governor of South Carolina from the 20th of January 1903 until the 15th of January 1907. On the 15th of January 1903, James Tillman shot Gonzalez in broad daylight with numerous witnesses. 
Tillman blamed the state and Gonzalez for his loss in the race for the Democratic nomination. The murder received national attention. Gonzalez died four days later on the 19th of January 1903. Taken to trial, the jury was considered to be rigged and was highly partisan, believing that James Tillman was validated to take murder into his own hands. He was acquitted in summer 1891. Gonzalez is buried at Elmwood Memorial Gardens in Columbia, South Carolina. A memorial cenotaph for Gonzalez was erected on Senate Street near the South Carolina State House, allegedly on the route that Tillman regularly walked home. James Tillman died on the 1st of April 1911. Benjamin Tillman remained the United States Senator for South Carolina until the 3rd of July 1918 when he died from a cerebral hemorrhage. The brother of Gonzalez, Ambrose E. Gonzalez, would die on the 11th of July 1926. The widow of Gonzalez, Lucia Barron, never remarried and the pair never had any children. She would eventually pass away on the 15th of April 1936 at the age of 65 in Colombia. Perhaps the biggest legacy of Gonzalez was The State, which is one of the longest running newspapers in the United States of America and by circulation is the second largest newspaper in South Carolina after The Post and Courier. The paper's news staff was a finalist for Pulitzer Prize for its coverage of Hurricane Hugo in 1989, which caused 107 fatalities and cost $11 billion in recovery. Additionally, its cartoonist Robert Ariel was a Pulitzer Prize finalist in 1995 and 2000. The newspaper is best known for reporter Gina Smith breaking the extramarital affair of Republican Governor of South Carolina Mark Sanford in June 2009, when he was reported missing from the 18th of June 2009 until the 24th of June 2009. It turned out he was in Buenos Aires, Argentina, and was having an extramarital affair with an Argentinian. As of 2021, the newspaper was owned and distributed by the McClaffey Company, which was purchased by the hedge fund at Chatham Asset Management for $312 million in 2020. Thank you for watching, please do yourself a favour and hit that subscribe button and the bell icon to inform you when new videos come out. Also why not hit that like button and leave a nice comment, it helps more than you know and your support is truly appreciated. Until next time, stay awesome, stay classy, be kind to everyone you meet and have an amazing day.